You know, one thing that I really noticed heavily within the entrepreneur community and any kind of visionary leader is the art of selling yourself. A lot of times your business or your very organization depends on the way that you sell yourself. This requires confidence, but sometimes confidence can be disguised as insecurities. We feel the need to be validated and accepted. Sometimes we can be confident in who God made us to be, but yet we still want to see validations from others. Let's talk about it. The Kyra Montero Show, season three, episode number seven. That means after six, seven. Y'all know how we do, man. We about to bring some music in. Blessings. Let go. What's up, baby? Oh, you ain't going to dance to it? And let's go. When I started with this vision, people thought I was a scrub. Yeah. Now they show me love. You would think I was the love. Yeah. Now I got the keys and I'ma show you what it is. King on this grind, you know I handle my feet. You know I'm getting to these. Blessings, 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 blessings. I tell them something like a hater, hey, but we okay. Okay. Stacking chips, Stackin zero lanes. Tell them check the circle. What? Zero lanes. Squad of fighters. We beat the game. What's going on, everybody? My name is Kyra Montero. Welcome to the Kyra Montero Show, presented by Frequency Canvas. This is season three, episode number seven, featuring the one and only Dr. Jada Montero, aka my wife. Baby, hit the button so to give him a round of applause. Round of applause, man. What's up, baby? Hey. How you doing? You know, I'm just hanging out in the canvas. Why don't you uh why don't you intro yourself for the for the people? Tell them tell them Stop. <laughs> introduce yourself. <laughs> All right. Um, well, I'm Jada Montero. Um, yeah, doc doc doctor. All right. Dr. Jada Montero. Um, and this man here gave me his last name twelve years ago. Right? For sure, for sure. Well, Twelve years ago. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I'm a I'm a social worker by trade, wife, mother. Um, yeah, and I'll just really just I'm just a person at the end of the day. <laughs> I'm a I'm a person at the end of the day. Very, very uh very humble uh introduction so today man i wanted to bring uh wifey on because she uh has three degrees in this thing called social work which what is the percentage in the ther therapeutic community uh, that are social workers 80 percent about 80 percent about 80 percent social 80 per, about 80 percent of therapists are social workers yes. come from the social work community yes. so with you having not only a bachelor's or a master's, but a doctoral degree uh, in social work, and you also, uh, what are you doing now? What is what are you doing now as a social worker? Oh yes, so I'm I'm a full time educator now. Um, so she's Professor Dr. J. Montero now <laughs> for the school of IU of social work. A round of applause, man! All right, man. So today's episode is called I'm Confident But Validate Me, question mark. I'm going to say that one more time. I'm confident but validate me. Everybody hit it with me, question mark, all right? And so season three I've dedicated to the Visionary Series, I Am an Entrepreneur, uh, which I guess in a way makes does it make, make me a leader in some kind of way. Yeah. Uh, and so uh, I kind of lead that church in some areas yeah. but i'm definitely an entrepreneur i've been a visionary since i've been a kid uh and i and i realized the struggles of building these things from the ground up so as i'm on my journey i'm just trying to throw some free game back out into the world to help other people on their journey and so one thing that i can say i'll be the first to admit this i'm a very confident person but at times i seek seek out validation uh, from other people or maybe I want to feel like I need to prove something maybe from things in the past that I've been through uh, and my wife has always tried to tell me like you know stop seeking validation from people uh, she really been like a personal therapist no cap 
and has diagnosed me with some stuff. You know what I'm saying? But it's all right though, you know. So, uh, nah, I'm playing, man. She she's always been supportive, but she definitely keep it real with me. And so I wanted to bring her on here, even though I said I wasn't gonna do any guest features on this podcast. Technically, this don't this ain't really this don't count because she own half the company. I'm about to say, I yeah. Pay rent. Oh, you pay rent? Yeah. <laughs> she she help invest and she help run the stuff. So so we got to we this the this the only time of these 10 episodes in this in this season that we're going to have somebody on here. And so you know, I want to I want to get into to some of these questions for you cuz I don't want to hold the people long. This is the first thing I want to ask you. Is it possible to completely be confident in yourself and still seek validation? It's found on that. Answer that and it's found on that. Yeah, a thousand, thousand percent. Um it's a thousand percent possible to be confident in who you are as a person and what you bring to the table um what your values are um but then still seek seek some external validation for that and i say that because there's different ways to seek validation right um there's a term like if my if if my best friend says that i'm (laughs) thank you baby um if my best friend says that i'm not wrong then i'm not wrong Right. Mm. Um, So I think there's sometimes situations um, that we go through, things that we're handling that we may seek. um, We may seek some advice just to say, hey, how you feel about this? But once that person say I'm good, I'm good. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Um, I don't want to get off. I don't want to get off. So (laughs) let, let me let me ask question number two. What is a realistic way to be confident yet not arrogant or have too much ego? I, I think some I think the issue is is that having too much ego or being arrogant comes into play when you are worried about someone else. Um your confidence should come from within who you are, um knowing your own value and worth as a person. Um and it doesn't have to do with Tom or Jerry that's sitting next to me that has nothing to do with anyone else. It's all about how I feel about myself. Um, And that is what I then express. And that is what illuminates off of me in society. Um, To be confident, me being confident means I don't have to worry about you. But if I'm trying to stunt on the person next to me, that's where arrogancy comes into play. Um, that's when my ego is taking, is taking more of the journey than I intend for it to, because now I need to show up the next person. Why, why? Okay. This is a side question before I get to question three. Why is it that, and I think this is everywhere, but I think in the black communities in America in black America and in different black communities, we've seen this like crazy. Why is it that you can have kind of a four front person trying to navigate and open doors and yet the very people that that leaders and different people have tried to open doors for the jealousy and the envy comes from people that are close to you mm-hmm. um more so than it does far from mm-hmm. you why why do you that think that stranger. is Yeah, Um, because sometimes the places where we've been planted the places where we have roots um sometimes the people around us can't stand to see someone growing when they're not. Ooh. So sometimes when you have people um, that you, you know, you expect them to be in your corner for whatever, for whatever reason that is, that, you know, they're, they're a relative, they're a really close friend. We've known each other since babies, but sometimes they can't stand to see that evolution. Um, and even you, even sometimes you feel the energy before anything outwardly is done. <laughs> I like that answer. I like being able to ask questions. Somebody else just, you know, saying what they say. Question number three for you. How much does people's past life and personal trauma that they've experienced feed into the need of being accepted and validated by other people? Oh, man. Um, Take as long as you need. <laughs> Um, yeah, I mean, 
your your personal history, whatever traumas you've experienced, they they come into foreplay. You got to remember the first thing that we do um, as children, as infants in growing up is we're seeking validation. Right. As kids with our behavior, we are um, we're behaving a certain way for our parents, caregivers, whoever that may be. And we want them to tell us if it's right or wrong. And and we interpret that by if it's praised or if it's condemned at the time with the behavior. Right. Mm. Um, So as a child, um, depending on whatever that behavior was, if you are continuously praised for what it for for how you're behaving, that is how you become socialized. That's how you behave um, outwardly and keep going. Um, Same thing about I think we have a conversation about. Um, you were saying how in high school or even teachers growing up, you never had a teacher that was like, you're not going to be nothing, right? All your teachers believed in you. They spoke life into your vision, into who you were as a person, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah, a lot of, you hear that in a lot of rap songs. Mm -hmm. I mean, I got a local client. He just said the same thing, like, shout out to my teacher who said I wasn't going to be nothing. Right, okay. Yeah, that never happened to me. Right. So, yeah. But think about in, in someone's childhood who it's the opposite. Someone someone consistently told them you're never going to be nothing or, um, you know, just demonstrated that they didn't have faith in who they who they could be um, showing their potential um, that that later on in life, that person as an adult is trying to heal. <laughs> knowing that they could have been anything that they wanted to be. And maybe they've taken some left, right, wrong turns. Um, but that childhood, that history has kind of shaped how, they, how they've how they moved forward. Mm. Okay. Anything else to add to that? I, well, I think, too, I, I want to make sure that it goes on the flip side, too, because it's not just the negative. Um, I, I'll, I'll speak from my experience um, as throughout my childhood as a child, I was praised when I um, did well, right? Okay. Um, so I, I received a lot of praise, especially academically um, in extracurricular activities. So then that conditioned me to be like, oh, I got to keep doing well, yeah. right? I got to keep doing these things. I got to keep doing well. But I, it's a slippery slope. Because you can then associate your achievements with your worth. Yeah, I think I struggle with that. Do I? Do I still struggle with that right now? Uh, I don't. I don't know. I don't. I don't see it as much. I don't see it as much. But like for me coming up, so like growing up, I've been at uh, here in the city of Marion, Indiana. I've been at the same church, Greater Second Baptist Church. Uh, salute to my church, man. Great church. Salute to my pastor, Pastor Benny Powell. Uh, senior and everything that that he's trying to do uh, within the community. Um, great vision. Round of applause for that, man. You got to get a round of applause, man. I love my pastor. I do, man. Great person. Um, like, but growing up in church, the first thing, like all of my friends, we grew up, I think our age group, I'm 33, you're 32 currently. Our age group, we grew up, I think our age group, my older grew up, and very competitive time periods um, prior to social media and everything existing because it was like if you if there was multiple kids in the house, you're fighting for attention. Right. I come from a huge family, so it's like fighting for that attention. Uh, you know, I always accuse, God rest my grandmother, so uh, Janice Louise Jackson Major, uh, salute to her, uh, my grandfather, Lord, Elder Lloyd Majors, but I was always accused like, you the favorite grandchild. So it was competitive there. When I was five years old, they threw me on the drums without drum lessons. And I just started playing uh, and kind of quickly was better than grown men uh, who played. And I remember at the age of five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, mm-hmm. having grown men being envious as a kid. Mm-hmm. Like the weirdest bleep ever. Like it, it was so weird to me. So. Mm-hmm. I always felt like it made me competitive from a young age. I always felt like I had to have like that Kobe kind of kill this mm-hmm. and knock people's head off. And I always felt like the the more I accomplish, the more I achieve, the more it's like flip a hater off and prove people wrong. 
that that like determined my value and my identity. Mm-hmm. And it like it it was like false confidence because it's like mm-hmm. the more I achieve, the bigger I feel. But then it's like if I'm not achieving goals that I set for, then I feel like small. I feel yeah. like this big. Yeah. So it's kind of like I've. I've struggled with that throughout the years. Oh yeah, yeah. But I also, but I also think it's it's key to really look at how you, at the age of five, someone had faith in you to say, "Hey, let's put them on the drums." Right at the age of five, right? Um, and I and and I know that obviously I know you a little more personally, but I know that for many years, um, people have had a different amount of faith in you. Um, and what you could bring to the table. Um, and, I, and I think the difference is, is that with some people, they only get that recognition when they're achieving. They got to go achieve first. No one gave them that faith beforehand. No one told them, hey, I know you can do this, so I'm going to go ahead and give you this opportunity. Um, so you have, we have a lot of people who are building. We have a lot of people who are building themselves up um, and who have been you know, kind of conditioned in the in their mind to either think, one, I'm not worthy because someone said I never could, or one, I'm not worthy if I'm not doing. Mm. Okay. That's deep. That's deep. That's definitely deep. Another question for you. Question four. How important is mental health to an entrepreneur and leader for their journey to success? I think I think that you already kind of explained to us, right? Like if you're Especially when you are an entrepreneur, you are literally, you're paving your own way. You're, you're creating the roadmap um, that other people don't even know, right? Nobody knows your vision like you do. Um, so I think when it comes to your mental health, it's really important for you to take care of yourself. Um, you can't be anything for anyone else. You can't build anything if you are not taking care of yourself, um, being in touch with how you are emotionally and mentally. Um, and what does that mean? And also knowing what it is I need to get there. Um, right. Um, I think we have multiple, um, we have multiple days or times when you're like, I'm in a groove or I'm not. Right. Mm -hmm. I need to be working. Um, I need to be working right now. I'm ready to be working or I really just need a break. And I always tell you to be mindful of those times. Right. Like, yeah, for sure. Yeah. If you if you need the rest, you need the rest. Um, It's a vision on on its own that you're creating by yourself. Um, So it's really important that you take care of you. I don't really have nothing to add to that. (laughs) I'll let the expert speak. I'm just going to ask questions. I mean. (laughs) Question number five for you. Last question that I got wrote down. Is the want of being accepted and validated by other people, good or bad, can it be healthy or is it detrimental? Mm. You want me to ask it again or you got it? No, I got it. All right, cool. Um. I, th- I think the desire for validations is sometimes very necessary. I will say that, um, especially depending on the situation. Um, it There are times where I, I've handled situations or I think I've handled situations, but I'm always going to call my sister. Shout out to my sister. Um, but I- <laughs> Shout out to my sister. You're going to send her the YouTube link quick, too. I shouted you out. Thanks, Sissy. Um, I, fun, fun fact, my sister was the first person in my life to tell me, Jada, you can do whatever it is you want to do. Whatever you want to do. Um, and so I'm probably going to call my sister. <laughs> um, and I'm going gonna, and I'm gonna to tell her the situation. I'm going to say, how did I handle this? Um, that's seeking validation, right? Um, that's, that's seeking her opinion. Um, sometimes I can I can call best friend, call my husband, and say, "Honey, this is how I'm feeling, right? Uh, I'm this happened, and I'm feeling some type of way." And you saying to me, "Baby, I understand, right? I understand how you feel that way." That's you validating my emotions. So sometimes seeking that validation is extremely necessary. Um, it's the validation of it's it's the validation of one's person that we want to be wary of, right? I don't need someone telling me, um, 
I don't need someone to validate me as a person. I know I'm a kick-ass mom. I know I'm a bomb wife. Um, I know that I have done great things within my career, and I don't need anyone validating that. That self-worth has to come from inside. It's not going to mean anything if somebody else um, is doing that for me. Um, but there are certain situations where you do need to be val- validated, and it's good. Yeah. Those are good things. Okay. Okay. Um, the second part of that being like, you know, um, can validation be healthy or is it detrimental? Can you talk about that just a little bit more? Yeah. So I, I, I'll go for the flip side. Um, when validation is, is detrimental to, to ones, right. Um, when you are consistently looking for others to define you, right. Um, when you're looking for someone else to, to, to be the definition of, of Kyron Montero, if I was looking for other people to um, pomp and circumstance at Dr. Jada Montero, um, th- that would be detrimental, right? That's showing, sometimes it's showing a lacking in how I feel about myself. Mm. Um, because that's the most important is how I feel about myself. It is now it is healthy seeking validation situationally um, when you are kind of doing a checks and balance. That's, that's the best way that I can describe it. Um, I'm, I'm not looking for someone to change my own opinion, but sometimes I need someone to check me. Right. Um, or I need to be checked or I need to be balanced out. We talk a lot about how we are. We are so different. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm going to be able to think through it through the long run. And he is, um, he, he's coming for you. <laughs> yeah, I'm more impulsive. <laughs> um, um, hot and heavy right off the top. But sometimes I need a balance. Yeah. Right. Um, that's healthy. That's healthy. Checks and balances, looking for validation for, for different other reasons. You know, I'll say this before we, before we go. One thing that I've noticed is like the times when I've been chasing validation Rather, it was intentional or unintentional. Mm-hmm. And the times that I've been, like, trying to seek seek that out or or let me just be more plain to, like, prove something, mm-hmm. most of the time the results that I want don't happen. Oh, yeah. But it, it's in the moments where I'm just focused on the vision and chasing that, then mm-hmm. things come on. Like, not a flex, but the fact that we up for the master nomination this year mm-hmm. from the Avidity Awards. You know, now you know, master engineer of the year. I wasn't, I wasn't even expecting that until uh, my good homie. Shout out to my dude Darius D. Darling, of Stay Royal Pro- Productions. Go get his album. Uh, I'll press on. Great album. We're doing some great things. But until he texted me and was like, "Yo, I just voted for you for master engineer of the year at the Video Awards. Did you know you were nominated?" I'm like, "What are you talking about?" Then he sends right. sends a screenshot, and then I call him. Yeah. And as soon as I got off the phone with him, I called you. <laughs> and then as soon as I got off the phone with you, I just ran back and forth from the office like ten times, <laughs> you know, because it's extremely, it's extremely hard as an audio engineer, um, to be nominated, let alone win. Mm-hmm. Just the nomination itself mm-hmm. makes you an award nominated mm-hmm. blah. Yeah. Uh, and so even in that moment, like I had to stop myself because I'm like, oh, I remember this person said this. Mm. Uh, I remember you was acting like this. I remember this person said I couldn't do it. And it's like, you almost shower the moment of right. when it comes. So, you know, I think when you're chasing clout, when you're trying to prove something to somebody, when you when you when you when you wanting that validation for the wrong reasons, I think whatever results you're wanting to happen is not going to happen. And very rarely does do people like people don't care. <laughs> like I like I like I had a I had a I went through this phase where I was like, as an artist, I I was buying diamonds and a lot of jewelry to kind of flex on people. Like, oh, I could get it too without trap money though. Right and. Outside of it being in a photo shoot and just some entertaining lines, nobody cares. 
I mean, you mm-hmm. might get some compliments like, hey, bro, that mm-hmm. watch is crazy, right? You right. know, but it's like at the end of the day, nobody cares. People like, yo, how do you like, how are you as a person? Right. How do you talk to people? How do you treat people? What's your integrity like? Right. So let me ask you this question then. So th- do you feel like when you have sought external validation for whatever reason, when you're seeking that out, um, in those times, do you feel like you are being true to yourself? No. Um. So so I think I think everybody wants validation. I think everybody wants to be accepted. I think I seen I heard uh, I seen Shannon Sharp talking about this on some kind of it was either a TV show or a podcast. I don't know if it was with Stephen A. Smith or somebody else, but it, they was having a similar conversation. To like, and he talked about how you know he won several Super Bowls. He you know he's a he's a legendary Hall of Famer uh, and a former NFL player. And he talked about like, yo, I wanted them championships and these trophies for certain kind of thing because that reflects greatness of of work that I put in. So I think a certain level of validation is like good. Like as a as a professional audio engineer, like. I want major label credits. Mm-hmm. I want billboard credits. I I want to win awards. I wanted the Sweetwater magazine article. I wanted to be in the front page of the newspaper. Mm-hmm. I wanted, you know, the Economic Growth Council Award as an entrepreneur. Like, these is resume stuff. So, like, it, it, right. it honors work that you put in. But at the end of the day, if if it's not for me... How, how am I trying to word this? If if it's anything outside of wanting to be respected mm-hmm. for the work that I put in, mm-hmm. I think that it. I think if you go outside of wanting the respect and the validation for the work put in, mm. for the grind, for building the vision, I think that's the healthy part. I think when you look for personal validation, identity building. Right. Things, things outside of that are attached to the vision itself and the grind itself. I think that's where it starts getting unhealthy. At least for like entrepreneurs and visionaries, anyway. Yeah, I, I could definitely understand the aspects of recognition, um, recognition for hard work. Right, um, that's one thousand percent. I do think that. I guess I'll I'll pose the question um, to to the to the greatest audio engineer come out of marion indiana i I posed the question i ain't say that she said that hey um if even without the sweetwater article um without maybe the nomination um without the 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 top charting label label clients aren't you still great yes yes i am I, i i think it's like this Okay, I'll be real in front of the whole world. Oh. I want to go down at anything that I touch. I want to be the best at it. Hey. I want to be it. If I can't be the greatest at it, I want to go down as one of the best at it. And I feel like if you don't have that mentality to lock in and you don't want to be one of the greatest at what you do, then what? why are you doing it? You know what I'm saying? Outside of you loving something and being passionate, that's cute. But you jump in the water to be the best swimmer. Yes. You know what I'm saying? You trying to be the best great white shark in the water you're not trying to you're not trying to miss a meal so for me yes i would still be great as uh, i still would be a great engineer in the sense of skill sets in the sense of clientele experience and like what what is provided by the business Mm -hmm. but i think that there's a certain level of conversation Mm -hmm. that cannot happen if some of those things don't reflect the ground Okay, prime example. Um, Charles Barkley is a phenomenal, uh, legendary player right. in the NBA, right? Mm-hmm. Great player in the NBA. Allen Iverson, phenomenal, great player in the NBA. Carl Malone, mm-hmm. legendary player. But but then there's a tier of people like Michael Jordan, Kobe Bryant, LeBron, mm-hmm. Shaquille O'Neal, Magic Johnson. Mm-hmm. Tim Duncan, the Isaiah Thomases, mm-hmm. the 
the Kevin Durant's, the Steph Curry's. Your favorites. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, like I, I love, like, I love Paul George, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. He's an Indiana uh born super mm-hmm. Indiana born superstar in the sense of like as an NBA player, mm-hmm. he was he he became a superstar on mm-hmm. the Pacers. Yeah. But he is as great as he is, mm-hmm. there's a tier of like LeBron, Kevin Durant, Steph Curry, Clay Thompson, Kawhi Leonard having two, like, them championships matter. Mm. I, listen, I'm I, I'm not disagreeing. I'm just at trying. All. I'm, I'm trying to put the rings on. Hey, I did. Listen, I'm not disagreeing at all. But I would caution anyone, um, especially I think from a woman's perspective, a little bit. Men have a little bit more competitive edge sometimes. Okay, um, and I think especially from a woman's perspective, I would caution anyone. Um, I use a term, and I do a lot of work in the DEI space, um, and I, I use the. T- the term um, in that space that acknowledgement is everything right so of course we want recognized Um, we want recognized for great works and things like that I think the dangerous slippery slope is correlating that recognition with your own worth I agree so I I, I agree so I'm confident but validate me question more I, I think I think that there's been a lot covered in this episode, hit a round of applause for the people listening. Probably went a little longer than we thought, but I think it was good. I want to bring you on here because these is uh, we actually had these kind of conver- This is normal conversation for us, honestly. All day long. Yeah. So <laughs> she be on my, you know what? If I make a Facebook post that's too arrogant or something, why are you posting that? Take that down, or you could have said it like this. So it's just like. Uh, shout out to my dude Andre Miles Jr., aka Johnny Lovely, because he's a friend too. Like between him and Jada, they definitely like, you know, I I like the I made a, a couple of posts about like working on this project I'm working on. They got like a Juicy J and Gucci Man features, and uh, I remember asking you if it was too arrogant. I remember the first time I posted about Gucci. I remember uh, Love was like, yeah, it's kind of a flex. <laughs> and I mean, I it, what I. So I told him that I disagreed, but I did sit back and and look and analyze like, am I, like, why did I do this? Why did I do it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, a thousand percent. And I think my, I mean, it's another conversation for another day, but I think a lot of times when I'm talking about what what we're posting and things like that, it's because not everybody is for you. That's 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 the hard realization is that not everybody is for you. So when you posting all your wins, um, you posting your coming soon's, um, you got to remember that it's snakes in the grass. That's fine, and that's why we cut the grass. Round of applause, man. Hey, man, I want to thank y'all for uh, tuning in, man. I know this is a more lengthy episode on this one, man, but I feel like it was. It was necessary. Make sure that you check out the Kyra Montero show on platforms like Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, slash YouTube, because they're, they're converting Google Podcasts to YouTube now, Amazon Music, et cetera, all of that type of stuff. Be sure to share and like. Check out the website, KyraMontero.com. One more time, man, we're going to get out of here on some dope music, my latest single, Blessings, brought to you by Engage Records, Fight Squad, The Movement. Let's go. Shout out to Dr. Jada Montero, a.k.a. Wifey, for, for being on here. Let's get when it. I started with this vision, people thought I was a scrub. Yeah. Now they show me love. You would think I was the plug. Now I got the keys and I'ma show we you still what going. it is. King on this grind, you, you know still working. I'm Come on. on. You know I'm getting to these. Blessings, 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 blessings. We out of here. Say say one last word to the people, baby. Then we out. Peace out. Peace and love. Blessings.